it's Mrs. Smith. Happy Independence Day. Or should I say, Happy Birthday, America. Or Happy Fourth of July. You can tell by our board today that we're going to speak about some special things about our America, our country, the United States of America. In fact, we have some letters over here that stand for the United States of America. Say them with me. U-S-A. That's our country. That's the name of our America. One more time. U-S-A. Now, before we get started in all of our special things about America, I want us to sing. I like to go to church, but listen to the last verse. I'm going to change it a little bit. Ready? I like to go to church. I like to go to church. Hi ho the dario. I like to go to church. I like to stand up tall. I like to stand up tall. Hi ho the dario. I like to stand up tall. I like to wave my arms. I like to wave my arms. Hi ho the dario. I like to wave my arms. I love the USA. I love the USA. Hi ho the dario. I love the USA. But let's not forget our normal last verse. I love to please the Lord. I love to please the Lord. Hi ho the dario. I love to please the Lord. You may be seated. Now, if I were to invite you to come over to my house for Independence Day, as soon as you got to my driveway, you would notice some things. You would notice some flags on the sidewalk. You'd notice a reef on the door with red, white, and blue colors and stars. A reef that says welcome. As soon as you walk in, you'd see all kinds of decorations about the USA. You go to my kitchen table. It has a special tablecloth. Even Connor and Jenna have special America placemats. You go into every room of our downstairs and you will see the colors red, white, and blue. Why? Because I love America. I'm proud to be an American. I hope you are proud to live in America too. Well, let me show you a special bag that I brought just for today. Can you see what the bag has on the front? Yeah, it's a flag, that's right. Well, inside my special bag here, let's see. Oh, this is out in our garden. Yeah, it's a red, white, and blue pinwheel. Oh, this is what I wear in the backyard when Connor and Jenna have the pool. Yeah, my America shoes. Um, oh, this is what we like to play with when it's dark so we can see all the colors. Yeah, it's our 4th of July lighter there. Um, oh, you might like this. These are 4th of July bears, one for Connor and one for Jenna. Do you have something like this at home? Oh, I dig in my bag a little bit more. Maybe you need to dry your hands. Would you like to use a special towel? Yep, it sure looks like the 4th of July here. Well, maybe you'd like to come over for a sandwich. I'll give you a plate with fireworks and we'll give you some special napkins. Do I have more in my bag? I sure do. Oh, maybe you would like to have a bowl full of fruit or popcorn to celebrate our special day. And uh, if you're a girl, you might like to wear some special jewelry. I know Jenna would share with you some bracelets and a necklace here. Well, why did I take the time to show you all that was in my special bag? Because when I think of America, I think of colors, I think of flags, I think of bravery and courage, and some of these things that decorate my home remind me of that. Let's see how smart you are. Take a look at these three things. Don't say it out loud. Just say in your head what you see. One, two, three. What do 
all three of these things have in common? Yeah, this is a pillow, a towel, and a plate, but what do you see is the same about all three of them? Yeah, that's right, they all have pictures of the flag. Did you know that a flag, this specific flag, is a symbol of our America? Now, a symbol is something that makes you think of something very special. When I see the flag, I think about our country, the United States of America. I think about the people of our country. I feel proud that we are a free country. When I look at the flag, lots of things come to my mind because it's a symbol that means something special. So the flag is a symbol of America. Do you notice the stripes? What color stripes are there? Yeah, red and white. Well, how many red ones? Let's count out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. How many white stripes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, seven plus six equals 13. It's the summer, but you are still thinking about your arithmetic. There are 13 stripes. Now there's a reason for that. See, way back when our country started, there were only 13 states. Now we live in the state of Florida. I was born in the state of Louisiana. Then my family moved to the state of Texas. And then we moved to the state of Virginia. My parents, Connor and Jenna's grandparents live in the state of Iowa. So all of those states are places that I have lived or have visited, but there were only 13 states when our nation began. So that's why there are 13 stripes. Look at the stars. Definitely more than 13 stars. In fact, if we were to take the time to count them, you would count 50 stars. Why do you think there are 50 stars on our flag? Yeah, that's really good thinking because there are 50 states. So the flag is a symbol. Now I know those of you that have been to school have started each of your days with a pledge to the flag to the flag of the United States. Do you know that we are the only country whose flag looks like this? There are other nations, other countries that have their own flag, but this one is ours and it's special. So when you go to school or maybe even on the 4th of July, if you're at church, we will pledge allegiance to the flag. Now a pledge is a promise. I promise to be true. You know when you say to your mama you promise to do something that you're going to do your best to keep your word. Well when we stand up tall and we put our hand over our heart and if you're a boy you take your hat off for the Pledge of Allegiance. When we say the words we are promising to be true to our country, to be loyal. So I'd like you to stand, and for some of you, this may be the first time you've ever said the Pledge of Allegiance. For others of you, you know it well. So let's stand, put your hand over your heart, and let's pledge to the flag. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Well done, you remembered those words. So we just said the Pledge of Allegiance. We made our promise to be true to our country. You may be seated, I'd like you to listen to these words. I see it hanging on the wall, and when I see it, I stand tall. I straighten my back, I promise to be true. I love the flag with the red, white, and blue. I'm sure you've guessed the flag I'm proud of. It stands for America, the land I love. God bless America. 
Well, that's a great poem to remind us how special our flag is. And I think we should stand and sing the song, God Bless America. Ready? God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Well done. What's the name of our country? USA. Now you may have noticed the three colors on our flag. In fact, let me show you a few things and see if you can tell. This is not a flag, but it has three colors. What colors do you see? Red, white, and blue. This is definitely not a flag, but what colors do you see? Red, white, and blue. When you see red, white, and blue, what does it make you think of? Yeah, the flag. And we've talked about that, but did you know that each of the colors of the flag have a special meaning? They sure do. Red stands for courage, for bravery of those who fought for our America, who died so we could have freedoms um, and so that we can be free. White stands for purity. So our, our country is not perfect, but it's the best country I know. Blue stands for truth or for being true and honest and fair. So not only when you look at a flag, do you know what the stripes mean now? Each of the first 13 states, you know what the stars mean? A star for every state, that's 50 of them. But now you know the colors. Red for courage, white for purity, and blue for truth. I wanna sing you a song and then I'll ask you to join me. It goes like this. See the colors in the flag, in the flag, in the flag. See the colors in the flag, red, white, and blue. That's easy enough. Stand and join me. If you have a flag, uh, you can go get it. Or if you don't, just pretend to wave one right there. Here we go. See the colors in the flag, in the flag, in the flag. See the colors in the flag, red, white, and blue. How about one more time? Sing it like you mean it. See the colors in the flag, in the flag, in the flag. See the colors in the flag, red, white, and blue. Well done. Now, again, when I think of America, I think of the symbol of our country, which is the flag. Now, I've got an activity for us to do. Here, let me put this up on our board. This is a song. But instead of singing it, we're actually going to do the words and a special activity. Here's another special red, white, and blue decoration. Oh yeah, I told you, all over my house, it's red, white, and blue to celebrate America's birthday. So the title of this is, I Love America. Do you see the colors of the flag? Another symbol of America after the flag could be the Statue of Liberty. Now, I'm not gonna to talk too much about her today, but I just want you to know that when people see the Statue of Liberty, they also think of freedom, what it means to be free, to come to live in the USA, to have freedoms to worship God, to be free. That's what is so important. Do you know that when we talk about freedom, that there are people in other countries who cannot go to church, who can't read their Bible, they have to do it in secret. 
who can't gather together, who can't even talk about their country. But in our America, we are free. We are free to worship God, free to read our Bibles, free to go to church, free to talk about our country. We have so many freedoms, and that's why the USA is the best country of all. I love it. Do you? Well, our song that we're going to actually just talk is called I Love America. When you hear those words, you're going to see me shake it. It kind of looks like fireworks, doesn't it? When I shake it, you shout, I love America. Let's try it. I love America. I'm going to try to trick you. I love America. Good job. We'll do that well together. So let's get started. I love America. Oh, I love this land. I love America. With justice may she stand. Grounded on the word of God. That's the Bible. A nation of the free. I love America. The land of our liberty. Now take a moment to look at this young girl. Now, what is she holding in her hand? Can you see that there? I know it's a hard angle. Yeah, she's waving a flag. She has ribbons in her hair. Can you tell what color they are? Red, white, and blue. What does she have on the front of her shirt? A flag. In fact, what color is my shirt? Red. I wore it today to celebrate America's birthday, our Independence Day. But more importantly, what does this girl have in her hand? The Bible. Boys and girls, do you know that there were a group of people who left their country named England to come to America so they could worship God? They left the country that was their home. They said goodbye to friends or family, and they journeyed across the ocean on the Mayflower to come to America. The pilgrims knew that believing God and reading his word and worshiping God as they saw fit was the most important thing of all. I'm glad I live in America so I can worship God freely. You can too. What's the name of this? That's right. I love America. It kind of looks like some fireworks are there, doesn't it? Maybe you'll even spend some time with your family having a barbecue or going swimming, doing some of your own fireworks as a way to celebrate America's freedom. Oh, look, there's something else I have to show you. Can you see it? Yeah, you see a flag right there. That's a symbol of America. That's right. And it's hiding. What's it hide or what's in front of it? Yeah, that's really smart. You know the name of this bird. What is the name of the bird? An eagle. An eagle is a symbol of our America. Do you know that an eagle is only found in what's the name of our country? The USA. It can only be found on the continent of North America. And this eagle, what color is his head? White. What color is his beak? Yellow. What about his wings? Yeah, they're brown. And when you think of a bird, just an ordinary bird, we think, oh, it's cute, it's little, and it has little wings that flutter. But when you see an eagle, and you see it up in the sky and its wings are soaring, you say, wow. Do you know that from tip of wing to tip of wing, an eagle's wingspan is eight feet? If I were to stretch out my arms from fingertip to fingertip, that would be six feet. Then you have to add a couple more feet and you would get eight feet. That's how wide its wingspan is. Did you know it can fly 30 to 35 miles an hour? That's how fast mom and dad can drive on the road that comes into church. That's pretty fast. You can't run that fast, 
but the eagle can soar that fast. Do you know that Mr. Jeff collects eagles? If you were to come into my house, you would find a shelf with eagles, another shelf with eagles, eagles on plates, eagles up on the wall, eagles in pictures. There are eagles everywhere. He loves the eagle so much because it makes him think of strength and courage. It's a symbol of America. In fact, during the 4th of July, we even have an eagle pillow on our couch because it makes us think of our America. Do you know that there was a man by the name of Benjamin Franklin who was part of a group of people that were deciding who would be or what bird would be America's national bird. The bird that would be pictured on everything for America. Well, a group of people thought of the eagle, but a man named Benjamin Franklin said, no, no, an eagle's no good, it should be a turkey. <laughs> well, have you seen a turkey on anything relating to America? No, not until it's time for Thanksgiving but uh, the eagle obviously was chosen. And I wonder, let me show you something else. If you come to Plantation Baptist Christian School, you might have seen your teachers wearing a shirt like this. What do you see at the top of the shirt? That's right, it's an eagle. And Pastor Reuben and Pastor Hunter and others chose the eagle to be a picture or to be the mascot for the school. So if you come to Plantation Baptist Christian School and you wear one of your school shirts or you see your teachers in one of their school shirts, you'll see the eagle. You'll not only think of strength and courage, but you'll think of our America and what it's like to live in a free country of America. I'm very happy. I live in America, and when I think of being happy, it makes me think of a song. Stand if you're happy and you know it. Ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Careful on this one. If you're happy and you know it, say USA, USA. If you're happy and you know it, say USA. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say USA. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. U-S-A, if you're happy and you know it, do all three. U-S-A, if you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. U-S-A. Yes, you said it. I love America. For those of you that didn't watch, I'll do it again. I love America. Well, throughout the time that we've been doing some online church, you've heard me talk about blessings and consequences. Blessings come when we choose to obey, when we're kind to others, when we're thoughtful to others. Consequences come when we choose to do the opposite of that, when we're hurtful or don't tell the truth or are sneaky about something. Now, sometimes mom and dad have to give the consequences and sometimes God gives the consequences. But we know the word blessings are good. Consequences are not so good, but they help us in the end to make better choices. Now, I can tell you at my house this week, there's been some consequences because not good choices have been made. But after those consequences, blessings came because then Connor and Jenna made good choices and they did it over and over and over again. So their mommy knew 
that they could have a blessing, a special. Now, maybe your mommies give you special things when you make good choices, but not only do mommies and daddies do special things for us, but God does. Did you know that as a nation, as the USA, that we have blessings and consequences too? When our nation obeys God, God blesses our nation. But when our na nation turns away from God and breaks laws and people hurt one another and people take things called stealing, uh, the things that don't belong to one another, that hurts God's heart. So God has to have consequences. In the, for our nation, in the middle of our Bible, what book do you think I'm open to? Yeah, it's either Psalms or Proverbs. I'm glad you said Psalms. In the book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 12, listen to this. Blessed. That's the first word. Now, blessed is the same thing as blessings. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Listen again. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So the Bible is telling us that when we as a country obey God, God blesses us. Now, we each can do our part. Do you remember our verse from last time? Be ye kind one to another. We ought to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We should try to do good. We should try to be helpful. People have been sick all over our country. Have we prayed for them? So when we think of this verse, God chooses blessings and consequences according to how his people, the people of the nation, are staying close to him. And when people are away from God, we need to pray and ask God to help them. So first, before we pray, let's practice our Bible verse. Oh, I wish you were here and that we were doing this together because I'd call you up to come and hold my stars. So we'll just have to do it here um, by myself. But you can say the words with me. Psalm 33, 12. Here we go. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalm 33, 12. You try as many words as you can. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalm 33, 12. Stand and say it with me. Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalm 33, 12. Now I'm going to pull out a plate, and when I show you the words, I want you to start saying the Bible verse. It goes like this. What's the word you see? Blessed. All right, let's say the words. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Great. All right, let's do one that's a little harder. What words do you see? Whose God? Is that how the verse starts? Now remind me. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. How about this one? Is the nation. That's not how it starts. Help me. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Psalm 33, 12, and is the Lord. We've got some missing words. Let's see if you can do it all by yourself. Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Well done. You may be seated. Don't forget that when you hear your mom and dad talk about things that are going on in the USA, you help them to remember, mom, dad, we need to pray for our country. In fact, I think it would be good if we sang the song Obedience because blessings come our way when we obey, right? If mom and dad are driving too fast on the road, what could happen? Yeah, an accident or a police officer could pull them over because they're not following the law. Um, what if you were caught taking something from a store that didn't belong to you? 
Yeah, that's stealing consequences. So I think maybe if we practice our song obedience, it'll help us to keep our nation being blessed of the Lord. You ready? Um, stay seated until my hands turn upward. In fact, why don't you stay seated until our fireworks go up? You ready? Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands. Doing it happily. Action is the key. Do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Now spell it O B E D I E N C E. That's right. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. How do you show that you believe? Yes, with obedience. You may be seated. In our next lesson, you're going to hear a man, or about a man named Paul. Now, Paul was a missionary. He was like Mr. Nick and Miss Lorena and Miss Pamela. And the time that Paul lived was a time when the rulers of the land did not like Christians. They did not like to hear about things of God. They did not want people talking about God and how to be saved so that they could have a home in heaven. And these rulers would put people in prison. They would kill people. They would take things from people. It was a very scary and sad time. And I can tell you blessings were not upon that country during that time because they were saying no to God. But just like Noah, who found grace in the eyes of the Lord, God saw a man named Paul. And Paul, with God's words, would write letters. And many of the books of our New Testament are Paul's letters. And in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, I'm going to read you two verses. You just listen, and then I'll tell you what they mean. 1 Timothy 2. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. You say, Mrs. Smith, what does all that mean? Well, Paul, even though he was, here's a big word, persecuted, he was uh, Things happened to Paul that we'll talk about in the next time that we're together that, that were awful. But even do all that, Paul said we need to pray. We need to pray for all that are in authority. So that would be our president, our governors, our mayors, uh, your parents, anyone that is an authority when you're at school, your teachers. We need to pray for all that are in authority that we lead a quiet and peaceable life with godliness and honesty. Do you remember way back to Father's Day that the father rejoices when his children live godly? Do you remember how we talked about that? So even though Paul had horrible things happening to him, he wanted us to pray. So that's what we're going to do. Two things that we're going to pray for, boys and girls. One, we're going to pray for our leaders. We're going to pray for our president. Have you heard Mrs. Smith pray for our president before? Yeah. We, we've prayed for him to make wise choices, to surround himself with people that will help him to be honest and to make wise choices and good decisions. So we're going to pray for those in authority of us in our nation because we want God's blessings. But second, we've got to pray for their salvation. Boys and girls, I live in the USA. I'm proud of it. My home is here, my earthly home. But because I've asked Jesus to be my savior, one day I'm gonna go to my home in heaven when Jesus comes back for me. Have you asked Jesus? To save you from your sins? 
Have you told him the things that you've done wrong and asked him to forgive you? Do you believe that Jesus is God and he died for you on Calvary, on the cross of Calvary? If you've done those things, you were saved. Boys and girls, I was seven years old when I trusted Jesus as my Savior. And I know one day I have a home in heaven. I want those, that home, heaven, as the home for those that are in authority over us. So we'll pray for wisdom, for honesty or integrity for our leaders, and we'll pray for their salvation. Let's thank God for our freedoms and then pray for our president right now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, you are mighty, you are good. Thank you that even in the midst of some horrible things going on in our country right now, you are still a good God. You still want to give us blessings. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Lord, I pray for all Christians right now that they would be praying for our America. As we celebrate our America's birthday, God, may every Christian stop and thank you for the home that we have, for the freedoms that we have. Lord, let us never take it for granted. Father, we pray for our president, our governor, our mayor, our city leaders, those that are in authority that I have not mentioned. God, I pray that they would surround themselves with people who are wise, who can help them make good decisions. Lord, we want the blessings upon our country. May it start with us first, being kind to one another. Help us not to forget that and never forgetting to be prayerful. God, we, we pray for our parents, our grandparents, for those that are sick. We need to commit to daily praying for our country. Boys and girls can do that too because God hears and answers prayer. If my people were God's people, we want to humble ourselves and pray and seek your face. Lord, we want our nation to turn around to honor and glorify you. God, help us be the right examples. Help us be the prayer warriors. We want to honor you this day. Lord, we love you. Thank you for all that you do for us. And if there's some boy or girl or mom or dad who's not put their trust in Jesus as Savior, maybe today on Independence Day, they can trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand, let's sing God Bless America again. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. Well done, you may be seated. Oh, by the way, <laughs> good remembering, I love America. Couple art projects for you today. Here's one, it's a little star guy. Let's see if he'll stay there on my paper clip. So you'll cut out a star, maybe mom can help you trace one, and then you take four strips of white paper and you just fold it accordion style. So that means forward and backward and forward and backward and forward and backward. And then you notice the little blue stars for his hands and his feet. I put wiggly eyes, made him smile because I love America. I hope you do too. And then there's one more project. Now this project, just needs a white piece of paper, red paper, and blue paper. Obviously on the blue paper, you're gonna trace your hand and cut it out. On the red paper, you're gonna cut three strips. Now I actually took my ruler, and on the piece of red paper, I put the ruler on top, and then I tore it going down so that it would have that ruffled, ruffled effect, just like a flag would have. So I did that to the three. I glued on the red strips first, then I glued on the hand, and I bent the thumb back so it looks like the number four. Happy 4th of July. 
Happy birthday, America. Boys and girls, remember, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Have a good time. We'll see you next time.